What is the difference between parametricism, computational design, and generative design? First off, I have to, I think we should ask ourselves why, like why would we even consider kind of moving towards this direction and how have we been doing it thus far? Um, first off, the way we've been doing it thus far has been primarily passive design or passive engineering, and that's been a human, or in this case, an ugly human, uh, with a computer creating a limited amount of uh, design options. This works. Um, we're more limited, but it does work as far as our process. Generative design basically has still, in this case, an ugly human with algorithms creating thousands of options. Now, why is this beneficial? Well, there's a lot of different metrics that go into design, whether it's code, whether it's thermal performance, structural performance, uh, cost, budgets, programmatic data. And so with all these different data metrics pulling at each other, you know, which one wins? And for me as a designer, if I'm going through, I can only design so many different options with the passive design method. And so moving towards kind of algorithmic modeling or generative design modeling, kind of mitigates that and helps us to create an optimal design for buildings. Ultimately, we can create optimal building performance, uh, the, the most affordable building, or the best uh, structural uh, load capacities, things like that, that would be able to be most beneficial for a project. So um, to kind of use an analogy, I wanna ask, how do you design a pizza? I don't know if, where you guys live, if they have uh, these restaurants called Mod Pizza. They have Mod Pizza, I love going there with my family. And the coolest thing about Mod Pizza is you have tons of options. You know, you can have regular crust, you can have gluten-free crust, you can have 8-inch, 10-inch, 12-inch, you can have um, marinara sauce, you can have any kind of uh, toppings, jalapenos, cheeses. And so you get to have all these different options. And the, and the pizza has been optimized for the person consuming that pizza. And so kind of thinking about this as it relates um, to our discussion, um, I want to talk about what the difference is between these different things. So we have parametricism, which is basically the idea of flexing this geometry with a set of parameters. We have computational design or algorithmic modeling, where we use tools like Dynamo and Grasshopper uh, to flex buildings and create multiple iterations. Uh, those have been really great and have been become a stepping stone into generative design and option in, optioneering. And so I want to talk about how you design a pizza and can that be translated to buildings as well and how we design buildings. So I'm going to show you kind of the difference here between these different methodologies in action. So with Revit, anyone that's been using Revit for a long time, you've been using this kind of passive uh, modeling process. You know, I can go through, I can start drawing walls, I can drop in windows, I can put in doors, I can put in curtain walls, roofs, etc. And I'm just kind of passively modeling this building. Now we're still using parametricism because I can go through and I can flex um, this wall. I can either push and pull it or I can use parameters, parametricism, um, to go through and actually adjust this as well just by putting in parametric data. So this is parametricism. Now algorithmic modeling or computational design uses tools like Dynamo and Grasshopper. Now, at first, this is pretty intimidating uh, for most people, but don't be nervous. So just to break this down, we have still a list of parameters that exist, but they can start to influence each other. You know, it's, it's more than just a wall. So I can start thinking about, you know, how many apartments do I have or what is their depth? And so I'm starting to kind of play with this idea and infusing parametricism, but it, it's taking it a step further. We can also start looking at, you know, number floors, things like that. And so this is where we can start using algorithmic modeling to really drive building performance, building design. Now, the thing with algorithmic modeling, it's still passive. I'm still going through. There's still only so many options um, that I can go through. With um, generative design, I can start really tapping into the power of the, the computer and the cloud and use kind of a co-creation process. And I'm going to show that. So if I go back um, to the internet here, I'm using a tool called Project Fractal. It's, it's, it's a cloud computing tool. And what I've done is I, I have the parameters, the metrics that I put into the computer using algorithmic modeling. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna publish those parameters or those metrics to the cloud. And then now I can go through and I can start to iterate on those options using generative design. And so if I go through and I hit the generative generate uh, button here. Let me just do a refresh, make sure this is good to go. 
um, if I hit generate, it'll actually start to go through and start generating um, different options for me using the parameters and the metrics that I've put in. Now, what's really cool about this is I'm not having to flex every single parameter. It's going through and iterating on that. Now, in here I have um, three different options per parameter. So it's going to take the lowest, the mid, and the top. I can put in more parameter or more uh, uh, variations in that if I want, say 5, 10, 15, whatever. Um, but that's kind of how that's, that is happening. And you can see that it's, it's moving the sliders in a sense for me and generating these different options. Now, after we go through the generative design process, I can then start using a thing called optioneering. And I can actually start to go through and start to filter uh, these options using the slider scale here and picking different options. I can also um, sort, say maybe based on apartment count or maybe number of floors. And so in here I have all these other options that have been created generatively using this process of generative design. And then I can go through optioneer, pick the best one that I want for my design and move forward. So I hope that explains the difference between parametricism, computational design, and generative design. I also threw an optioneering there. That's a bonus. Hope you enjoy that. If you have any other questions, you can reach me at bill.allen at evolvelab-inc.com or you can go to evolvebim.com. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.